Faces have changed, faces have aged Memories are starting to fade A day at a time Remember I'm here with you You're trying so hard just to keep up Every day's a chance to restart I'll still be here Trying to pull you through Every word that's forgotten Every note left unsung Trust in me just hold my hand and take me with you Bring me into a world no one else can walk through Hold my hand Cause I'm still with you Love teaches hope that love Teaches joy and able the ones who are frozen in time. Imagine our hearts choosing to shine on a journey that's yours and mine. Yours and When I was young, you held me near Storms would pass and I never fear Your smile and kisses I'd hold so dear Helped me to be strong Remember places we've explored Sights and sounds above us all Memories you don't recall Are those I've not forgot When we cannot see Doesn't mean we'll get lost
Welcome to the Enabling Festival 2020. I'm Guan, your festival host this year. Now, due to the present pandemic situation, the Enabling Festival 2020 will be traveling into your home. Now, the festival aims to explore, challenge, and shape perceptions and understanding of dementia and caregiving through technology and the creative arts. Now, this year, we will focus on the sense of sight with the theme, Do You See What I See? We have curated many exciting programs for you this year, so please visit us at this website below to see what we have to offer. Now, please enjoy the upcoming program. Welcome to the Enabling Festival 2020 Insight. Our special guest today is Professor Kwa Yi Hyo. Now, Prof Kwa is one of our many staunch supporters of the Enabling Festival. He delivered the opening address at our inaugural Enabling Festival in 2018. And he's no stranger to the dementia community with many books and articles to his name. Now, one of his many books included Colors of Aging about the mental health of the elderly in Singapore. So we're going to link up with Prof Kwa very soon. Hi Prof, how are you? Hello, hello, hello. Very well. Good and to I'm, see you, good to see you. Yes. Thank and you so much for joining us. Yes. And before I begin, I just thank all of you. Many of you are volunteers in, in this enabling festival. I think it's wonderful for well, young people to come on board. Okay, thank you. Now, how is life? Of a retiree, uh, huh? I just I heard that you re recently retired. Well, I'm not fully retired. I'm working half time in university, mm -hmm. and the other half time is to run my clinics. I have a clinic at the uh, Farrer Park Hospital, mm -hmm. and uh, also at the University Health Center. Mm. And we are pretty pretty busy because there are a lot of uh, frontline healthcare workers are also under a lot of stress. Okay, um, and and for that we provide a lot of. Um, uh, uh, counseling support, you know, uh, to help them out. All right. So, so that takes a lot, a lot of time. Yeah. So you're still, my time. You're still pretty busy, lah. Yes, that's right. That's that would right. explain yeah. why you're not able to join us in the studio, and we have to have this little chat via Zoom. That's right. So, so thank you very much. Uh, well, nonetheless, we can't to... thank you enough. All right. right. So, uh, we understand that you will be sharing with us how the arts can play an important role in the lives of uh, persons with dementia. So would you like to share a little bit more about that with us right now? I thought of covering three points besides the arts. Maybe uh, the, uh, call it through the mind's eye, you know, the um, insight into the, the mind of someone with, with dementia. Mm -hmm. And secondly, something, something on the arts. And thirdly, um, I heard that Daniel is quite and, and Jeremiah are quite keen to know some of the latest research that we are doing here in the university. Yes, that they are. That relevance to uh, to people uh, caregivers or people with dementia. Mm -hmm. So the first part is about the the, um, the thinking mind of people with dementia, um, and I've seen quite a number of people for the last 30, 40 years with dementia, and the first thought that comes to them if they know that their poor memory is fear. Fear. Yeah. Fear. Mm -hmm. So it's um, sometimes uh, very tricky in terms of trying to, to break bad news to them. So I don't tell someone that, oh, you have dementia, you know, right. and you have Alzheimer's disease. I'll tell them that you have a memory problem, but we, there are many things you can do. For and example? With the, so, so uh, I'll tell you the, the, the things you can do later on, mm -hmm. but to, to first to reassure them because it, to, to allay the anxiety. Right. And, and it is from our, our long research with the world health that we know that dementia is not just you have an illness and you die within three or four years. Mm -hmm. it, it's quite a prolonged illness. Mm -hmm. And there are many things we can do. Mm -hmm. I'll talk about that in the second part on, on, on the uh, activities we have. Okay. So the first one is fear. The second one is depression. Mm. Mm. Once they discover that they have a failing memory, they go into depression. And sometimes they become suicidal. You know? right. So so, so we have to give them a lot of reassurance that, that even the 
dementia or, or memory problem. There are many things that can be done to help them out. The third, which they are more fearful of, is as you grow a bit older and with, uh, with early dementia, you sometimes in the evening or at night see a lot of strange things in the house. That's visual hallucination. Right. Okay. Sometimes they call it the, the sun downing effect, right? mm-hmm. meaning that when the sun is about to set and there's not enough light in the home, the shadows begin to play tricks on the human mind. And the, the, the elderly person or the patient can sometimes get very frightened. They, they see strange things in the house. You know? So there are many things that can, can be done also to help them out for that. You know? okay. For example, uh, last week I saw an elderly person who told me that, well, I, I see my mother. You know, she, she's about 80. My mother is sitting on the sofa. Mother has died of 40 years ago. So I, so I tell her family, don't tell, tell them, oh, that your mother has died. Don't try to uh, contradict them, make things more difficult for them. Say, okay, maybe when I talk to your mother about something, you know, ask them questions, or let's go for a walk somewhere, mm-hmm. distract them you know, so it's awake. Just to distract them from... That's right, that's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. So I think, let me move on to the second part. I think all, all this... Um, also available in the slide that I've sent to Dawn. Mm. Uh, the second part is on the, um, the, the research that we are doing. Right. We conducted the research which I spoke in your, in your, your seminar some two years ago mm-hmm. on uh, research at Jurong area. And I probably will show you a slide on, on the activities that is no longer just in Jurong, but also in many parts of the island. Mm-hmm. The program is called Age well every day. Age well every day. Age well, that's right. Okay. Something more positive. Initially, we started off with dementia prevention program. The word dementia is big stigmatizing. Mm. So that program, nobody wants to go to ten, that kind of talks, you know. So we tell age well. Mm. So everybody would like come. That. And in, during the, uh, uh, the, the seminar with these elderly people, you talk to them in simple languages, uh, Shown off te- uh, uh, technical terms, what is dementia, what is depression, your diet, prevention of falls. Mm. And then we tell them about activities they can do. Mm. It's good for the brain. So one of the things is Tai Chi. Hygiene. Uh, tai Chi exercise. Okay. Art therapy. You know? okay. Also music reminiscence. Mm. And the fourth one is mindfulness uh, uh, practice or meditation. So four things. Maybe I ask you, which do thing, which you think that the elderly person uh, uh, improves faster in terms of their mood? Well, I think as long as we can engage them and do something interactive. Yes, right. right. Which one will be? Of the four activities, art, music, mindfulness, and Tai Chi, which one will be improve fastest? I think music mood? helps. That's right. You are very good. Score. In exam, you score one point now. Very good. <laughs> well done. <laughs> so it's music, really. It's music. Mm. And, and uh, then later on, it's art uh, and mindfulness. Okay. Okay. And then um, let us move on to, to later on. I think Don will show you some pictures on what we show. Uh, the art therapy uh, came about um, partly because of the uh, um, encouragement of our friend, Professor Tommy Cole. Mm. Tommy Cole, some years ago, was in charge of the museum, asked me whether I was interested to do a study on art and people with dementia because um, there was a, a research, I think it's still on in New York, mm. on, on uh, art and dementia in which they bring elderly people with dementia to the Museum of Modern Art. Mm-hmm. Yeah and uh, to see whether it will prevent a rapid deterioration okay. uh, uh, so that they will uh, so have good quality of life. Mm-hmm. And then I told uh, Professor Cole that maybe we should do something better than the New Yorkers because um, we will see the peop- we will bring people who are high risk of dementia to the National Gallery and then we scan the brain, mm. MRI scanning the brain mm. before and after the, uh, the visit. You know. And we, we conducted a six-month study. Oh, okay. And, and the, and the uh, results have been published, the first study in the world, you know, the, the, so that I showed that people who, who, uh, who visit the, the, the um, art gallery and look at paintings, the Singapore study is obviously much more interesting than the American study, in which we don't show them pictures of Picasso, you know, mm. show them paintings of, of Singapore in the 1960s and 50s that all people can identify with. Can it's relate a bit, uh, to, right? 
Yeah. Exactly. Mm. It's a little bit of a, a reminiscence. Mm. So there's a painting called Upper Nama Awa. Upper what Nama is, Awa. Upper is what? Nama is name. Uh, Awa is you. Uh, what okay. is your name? What is your name? Okay, okay. Okay. So if, if an elderly person in, in uh, Jurong or, or those uh, who are in the 60s or 70s look at the painting, they know it's in the 1960s because between 1963 and 65, Singapore and Malaysia were one country. Right. And the Malaysian government decreed that all students must study Malay. Mm. You know? And therefore, we try and pick up so the tuition class. And so they, they will talk about the days, they, they study Malay language, they sing the Nagaraku, the Malay songs and all that. So it's all a reminiscence. Another painting which you showed was hawkers in Chinatown running away from the health inspectors. And this is a, a beautiful painting and I hope you all will see that painting. Okay. It, it, in fact, it's in the channel News Asia, you know, in the, right. in the program. Mm. And it's very interesting because if you show that to a lot of people who are in their 60s, or 50s, they will tell you that yes, there's a common scene in, in, in Singapore, even in Malaysia. The health inspector will come and chase away all the hawkers. Most of them don't have a license. You know. That's, that's uh, where the phrase, a uh, picture paints a thousand words come into play. Isn't that's it? right. That's you just right. take a look at the painting and then you know what, what it's all about. Exactly. Mm. And they can identify those times when they're very poor. You know. Right. Some of them are hawkers, and they said, ah, that's the time mm. I was poor, I was trying to eke up a living, and then, um, and in, in many, in, in some instances, you must, you must bribe the healthcare inspectors. Right. Then, I know, I, I, I'm brought up in Malaysia, they tell you, not only bribe the inspectors, you got to bribe the gangster, they come and harass you, you know. Mm. And the third group, the policemen, they come and harass you, so you got to pay three groups of people, and mm. it, it's a very tough life for them, but now they survive. Mm. So, so uh, the painting itself, the reminiscence, and then we, and they feel very happy that they are coming to the National Gallery. Mm. And I, I hope more people go to the National Gallery. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful gallery, and it's all the paintings on that you can enjoy. Okay, okay. All right. So the, the, the third part of it is the research that we are conducting. Mm. A new area of research um, uh, that will tremendous uh, impact on people's lives is on gardening. We found that gardening not only improve uh, uh, the mood of the person and also improve, reduce anxiety, improve also your immune system. Then you're less prone to have infection. Mm. We're not too sure about COVID. We know most of them uh, don't have cough and cold after that. You know, wonderful old people. Right. From there, we move on to another study in which we, um, we bring a group of old people, seniors, to the botanic gardens, mm -hmm. into the rainforest. It's called forest therapy. You know? yeah. Forest therapy. Therapy. So not only be able to walk through the forest, improve the physical health, the mental health, because they go to the forest, there's so much tranquility. Mm -hmm. And they walk mindfully. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. and, and we have somebody to, to follow them, a guide, to show them what's the name of this tree. Mm -hmm. Oh, that tree is called the Tembusu tree. Mm -hmm. That's the Jolotong tree. You know? So all these names of trees you have familiar you are more familiar with it, admire the flowers, you know. So I think as you go through the forest, sometimes you just walk through without understanding, without knowing the names of all the various kind of, of flora, flora and fauna. I think that's very good for them. And realize that after, after walking for about, about 10 weeks, they begin to love the forest so much, they don gave some donation to the national parks and planted 30 medicinal trees. This is very important because they, they, this love for nature, you know, is because we realize that part of the problem of global warming, people are destroying the rainforest. Mm. And I hope you all know, you will realize that there are only two cities in the world in which there's a rainforest in the city. And the two cities are Singapore and Rio de Janeiro. Wow. You mentioned it, yeah. Okay. In, in a botanic gardens, the rainforest is fantastic. Mm. Right? All right. Many countries, they destroy the rainforest you know, for development, but then the cause of global warming. So this is very important for us to admire and love it. Okay. Then the, the, another important study or relevance to caregivers is we're going to find out how uh, um, we can help families um, to uh, take care of elderly people. Um, I'm quite uh, uh, impressed with Daniel. I think 
you, Jeremiah, look after the parents, you know, uh, or Daniel's parents with dementia. Uh, um, there'll be Daniel and Danny. Daniel and Danny, all yes. right. Oh, Danny. <laughs> Not to share the names. Uh, okay. Right. So, apologies. No apologies worries, for that. no worries, yeah. So it's, it's very good because um, we have a lot of problems. I used to be the CEO of IMH. And, and sometimes people with parents with dementia, they, they leave it, they, they bring to the, uh, the, the uh, hospital uh, uh, admission room and then they leave the old person there and never came back. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't take care anymore. Right. So I think that's bad. I think we should look after our, our old uh, relatives, you know, who look after us when we were, when we were very young. Mm-hmm. And um, so we're doing a study of how we can build up this kind of intergeneration bonding. Yeah, um, and it, I realized that sometimes young people don't know about their family people. You know, uh, um, last week I saw an undergraduate in, in, in the West, and I, and I asked him, "What does your father do?" He said, "I'm not too sure." You know, <laughs> so what do you mean? I know he works in the, he works in as an engineer, but where? I'm not too sure. You know? mm. So he said, "So I asked him, do you have a dinner with your family? No, we eat our own in our own room." You know? So they don't know each other. If I don't know each other, why do you want to take care of him mm-hmm. from that point mm-hmm. of view? Right. And so, so trying to build a bonding to do, doing a study, you know, how the, the child will ask the elderly uh, father or, or, or mother, you know, tell us the story of your life. Right. So that they understand. You know, many of parents who are, in, who are baby boomers now in their 60s, in their youth, gone through very difficult times. Singapore at that time was then quite Tough poor, period. third world. Mm. So we're trying to build up that kind of, kind of study, you know, Okay. And I think that the, the end of it, the last uh, uh, slide will show you a painting. Uh, later on, Don will show you a painting of, um, of a, a house and an oak tree. Um, and this, this, is the most fake, this is the most expensive painting in Singapore. Have you seen it? No? No. I don't think you've seen it. And I, and I, and I happen to own... I happen to own this painting. Okay. I'll tell you why I can't come to own this painting. Wow. Well, some uh, some almost 45 years ago when I was training as a psychiatrist at Oxford, mm. I was told that I must be analyzed by the psychiatrist before you start your training. Wow. Uh, so I, I said, um, where should I go for analysis? They told me, oh, you must go to North London to a place at Hampstead Heath, a clinic called the Anna Freud Clinic. Anna Freud, the daughter of Sigmund Freud. Then I asked them, how much is it? They 50 pounds. Those days, uh, 50 pounds is a lot of money. You know? So I said, oh, I can't afford it. Mm. So I was told that in that case, you do a painting. So I did a painting. You and did? Then the, the, you did this, I did this painting. Oh, wow. Okay. It's, it's called An Undefeated Mind. It's a okay. painting. It's a house down there. There's an oak tree. And there are a lot of uh, waves down there. So the, the art therapist asked me, what is this house about? I said, that's not just a house. It's a home, a family. Chinese perspective, the family is very, very important. Right. And what about the oak tree? The oak tree of values in life. You know? Filial piety, compassion, integrity. And these values are very important. Man. As we go through life and even to this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, all these values are very important in our lives. You know? The care for people, you know, without which the whole society will crumble. You know? so, so these are things that I, I spoke about to them and and the art therapist was very glad. I'm very happy with you. Okay, you can join us as a trainee in Oxford. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's, that's, these are the things that we think about. And, and I think, I, I hope you, you, your, your festival will be a great success. You know? yeah. and, and so thank you very much. Thank you so very much, uh, Prof, for joining us and for sharing so much with us. And we really hope that uh, the caregivers who are actually with us watching this would also walk away with some new uh, objectives perhaps, you know, in giving the, uh, the care uh, to their loved ones. Lah. All right. Yes. So once again, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. And this concludes our segment on Inside. Now, if you have any questions for Prof Kwa, or if you wish to find out more about the Enabling Festival 2020, please visit us at our Facebook page, Instagram, or website to see what we have lined up for you. Do drop us a message on any of the social media platforms. So once again, thank you and thank thank you. you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching our program. We hope you can help us to fill in a simple survey using the QR code provided at the end of the program. Now this will help us to improve 
as well as to fulfill our funding requirements from our various funders. Please help. Now, if you have any questions or if you wish to find out more about the Enabling Festival 2020, please visit our Facebook page, Instagram and website to see what we have lined up for you. Drop us a message on any of the social media platforms. You can also write to enablingfestival at gmail.com and our colleagues will reply to you as soon as they can. Take care and stay safe. Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm Danny. And we are the co-founders of the Enabling Festival 2020. Yeah, the Enabling Festival is in its third year now and it certainly has been a long but rewarding journey. At this note, we hope you can support us by pledging $1 or more to the Enabling Festival 2020. We've got this link right down below here. Yeah, this pledge will enable the festival to further the cause and implement more initiatives for a collective impact which has societal benefits for the dementia community and caregivers. Dementia is a very real issue that could happen to you and me. We sincerely appeal to you to walk this journey with us. So come and participate in the various programs that we have lined up for you and we hope to see you online at the Enabling Festival 2020. Thank, Thank you. you. Doesn't mean